Hello creatives! In this video, I'll share how to manage your money using the 50, 30, 20 rule. Watch out for these budgeting tips that will change your life. So, you've decided to start budgeting. You know that you have to pay for household expenses, save up, and pay your bills. The problem is, however, that you don't know how to split your money. Well, I introduce the 50, 30, 20 rule to you. Senator Elizabeth Warren popularized the budget formula in 2005 when she and her daughter Amelia used it in their book, All You're Worth, The Ultimate Lifetime Money Plan. According to the senator and her daughter, this budgeting formula can help manage finances and that's why I'm going to review it. So, what does the 50-30-20 rule state? This budgeting rule requires you to divide your after-tax income into three. 50% needs, 30% wants, and 20% savings. Let's break down the budgeting rule next. But before then, if you are new here, consider subscribing to this channel to continue receiving great videos like this one. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get informed every time I publish a life-changing video. Here we go. 50% needs. Needs are essential for survival. They are a must-pick, and that's why Senator Warren and her daughter advocate for the committing of 50% of after-tax income. Examples of needs include food or groceries, healthcare, rent, clothing, utility, transportation, and childcare. The needs also include insurance premiums and minimum loan payments. While the needs budget may differ from household to household, Senator Warren advises that you can tweak things around. It may mean changing grocery suppliers, utility service providers, and housing. 30% wants. Unlike needs, wants are not entirely essential. That means you can survive without them. The only thing they do is improve your lifestyle, comfort, and fun. Popular wants to include in your budget are eating out, electronic gadgets, fast internet, vacations, a new car, gym memberships, or tickets to concerts and sports events. Senator Warren advises that you allocate a maximum of 30% of your after-tax income to your wants bucket list. But still, if your needs are more than 50%, then you have the option of cutting down on the wants. For example, you can cook at home instead of dining out. That will mean a more significant share for the needs than the wants. 20% Savings Lastly, the rule recommends that you take the remaining 20% of your after-tax income and use it on saving. Savings is a broad term that could include an emergency fund, investment account, retirement account, or debt repayment. Whereas minimum payments fall in the needs category, loan payments that reduce your future interest and principal fall in the savings category. The savings bucket list is essential for anyone who wants to prepare for emergencies and retirement. Directing money to an emergency fund, for example, covers you against life's emergencies like an illness, a job loss, a car problem, or a leaky roof, just to mention a few. These events are unforeseen, so it's wise to have some money saved up for addressing them. When it comes to investments and retirements, this budgeting rule dictates that you start early. You can put money into an IRA, individual retirement account, a mutual fund, or stocks. How to budget your money using the 50-30-20 rule, four key steps. According to Senator Warren and her daughter, these steps are essential in managing your income using the 50-30-20 rule. Step 1. Determine your after-tax income. Your after-tax income is what's left on your paycheck after deducting taxes. That includes income tax, state tax, social security tax, and Medicare tax. It's easier to determine your after-tax income if you are on a state paycheck. Your after-tax income is right there on your payslip. Remember to add back deductions like retirement and healthcare deductions if they've been taken out. If you are self-employed, you just need to deduct your taxes and business expenses from your gross income to get your after-tax income. Remember that being self-employed obliges you to submit the self-employment tax so you also need to include that deduction when calculating after-tax income. The chances are that you'll pay double what you pay for social security taxes when it comes to self-employment taxes. 
Step 2. Limit the needs to only 50%. After you establish your after-tax income, you need to split it into two and dedicate the first half to your needs. It doesn't mean that you have to spend half of your after-tax income, but Warren and Amelia advise that you don't go beyond the limit. What's important here is that you know how to differentiate needs from wants. As I mentioned, needs are those expenses that are crucial for your survival. That means they are costs you cannot forgo. For example, you can't forgo buying groceries, but you can't forgo dine-outs. So groceries are needs, while eating out is a want. Step 3. Don't exceed 30% for the wants. Senator Warren and her daughter recognize the need to have comfort and fun. That's why they recommend a maximum allocation of 30% of your after-tax income to wants. However, that doesn't imply that you should be extravagant. You can buy beautiful clothes, go on a vacation, eat out once in a while, and get a new gadget, provided you stay within your 30% allocation. It's only a problem when you stretch your wants bucket list to more than 30%. That means squeezing your savings or needs, and that's a bad idea. Step 4. Spend at least 20% on savings. Now, let's talk about the last step, which is the most important for your financial future. As I mentioned, the savings bucket list includes the emergency fund, debt repayment, investment, and retirement account. That's a lot of obligation to cover with only 20% of your after-tax income, if you ask me. But given that only 7.6% of Americans have personal savings, that's better than nothing. 20% is not the maximum limit for savings, but the lower limit. That means you can save more if you manage to cut back on wants. In my view, you need to save more than you use. The 50-30-20 rule made easy. Your options. Perhaps doing the complex calculations is not your cup of tea. So consider easy ways of applying the 50-30-20 rule. I recommend the following options. A. An online calculator. Platforms like NerdWallet, The Modest Wallet, and MoneyFit have an online calculator for 50-30-20. So all you have to do is key in your after-tax income and the online calculator will take care of the rest. You know how much to spend in seconds on needs and wants and how much to save. So your only task is to determine your after-tax income as I explained earlier. B. An online spreadsheet. In case you want a more detailed 50-30-20 budget, then consider using an online spreadsheet. You can use Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. The programs have pre-made spreadsheets that you can use with ease. You can also try Apple Numbers, which is just as handy as the other two. With the spreadsheet, you can break down the individual categories and precisely define the destinations for your after-tax income. For example, you can split the savings bucket list into an emergency fund, retirement, debt repayment, and investments. Why the 50-30-20 rule works? The 50-30-20 rule is an easy starting point for new budgeters. The budgeting rule only focuses on the three big spenders, needs, wants, and savings. As a result, it's easy to follow for anyone. The 50-30-20 rule also compels you to be intentional with your saving. You get to prioritize more on needs and wants, and thus, it's an excellent tool for frugal living. Moreover, the 20% saving allocation makes it easier to save for emergencies, debt repayment, investments, and retirement. Who should or shouldn't use the 50-30-20 rule? Is the 50-30-20 rule for everyone? Of course not. The budgeting formula for one may not suit someone on a small paycheck or a high cost of living. That's because these people are likely to spend more than 50% of their after-tax income on basic needs. Also, guys with large debts may find it hard to pay down what they owe using this formula. Most large debts require a minimum payment that takes about 10 to 20% of what you take home. So you may end up using all your savings on debt, and that will leave you with no emergency fund or investment. Furthermore, the budgeting formula is not a forever method. Once you start making more money, your financial goals change. You start thinking about making more investments than savings. So the 50-30-20 rule may not work. Overall, this budgeting method is perfect for beginners. The formula is simple to employ for guys who've never budgeted before. 
It also works for anyone starting their lives, like newlyweds or the newly employed. In conclusion, the 50-30-20 rule is a nearly foolproof way for new budgeters, newlyweds, and newly employed people to manage money. It's easy to copy and focuses on the most significant spenders, needs, wants, and savings. So give it a try if you haven't been budgeting. I know this video was exciting and you loved it. Also check out this exciting video about 8 money habits that keep you poor and other life-changing resources in the description below. If you haven't subscribed yet, you're definitely missing out. See you in the next 